Hey guys, it's Ashley, and if you were unaware, I love romance. Specifically, romance books. You guys know that I've always been a fantasy person, but fantasy romance? just has another place in my heart. And now, now I have just become consumed with this desire to read nothing but romance books. So today, today I'm gonna talk to you about some of the books that I have on my list that I'm preparing to buy and read as fast as possible. I just, I felt like this was coming at some point. And here it is. Before we get into the video, I just want to give a huge thank you to today's video sponsor, Book of the Month. So if you weren't already aware, Book of the Month is a super popular and fast-growing online book service for readers. Their mission is to promote new and emerging authors and help readers find books that they love. Each month, their team vets hundreds of books and gives their readers a curated selection of new and early release titles so that readers can spend more time reading and less time researching. One of the best parts for me is that Book of the Month is risk-free, meaning if you don't see a book that you like that month, you can skip free of charge and wait for the next one. Plus, they have the best price for new release hardcover fiction. I swear some of these books that I'm going to show you today literally say that they sell for $27. Like, $30? It's crazy. Um, Book of the Month gives you an amazing price for these books. So if you're interested, you can actually use my code Dash of Ash to get your first book and box for just $9.99. You get a $30 book for $10 what's not to love. So let me go ahead and talk about the five books that they have for November that you can choose from. I think this is a really good selection and I'm excited to share it with you guys. So first up we have A Little Hope by Ethan Joella, which is a story that follows the intertwining lives of about a dozen neighbors as they experience everyday desires and fears. Things like a lost love, a stalled career, an illness, and a betrayal. Then we have a debut YA fantasy called The Keeper of Night by Kylie Lee Baker. This is a story about a young girl who is part of this group called the Reapers who collect souls and she has to impress them by eliminating three demons with the help of her brother and an untrustworthy ally. Then we have The Collective by Alison Galen. This is a story about a grieving mother who ends up finding a group of other grieving mothers called The Collective and realizes that they want to enact their revenge by going after and killing the people they believe responsible for their children's deaths. Then we have The Family by Naomi Krupitsky. This is a story set in mid-century Brooklyn following the friendship between two women who are bound by the sins of their fathers. And then we have the one that honestly I would probably choose if I, if I were picking just one this month, and that would be How to Marry Keanu Reeves in 90 Days by K.M. Jackson. In this story, two friends take a wild road trip in order to stop the world's most eligible bachelor from making the biggest mistake of his life getting married. <laughs> so in addition to these five choices here, Book of the Month also has different add-ons that you can add to your box every month if you want to get something more than just one of these five. They sent me two of their options this month that I want to share with you guys. The first one does make me laugh a little bit, so sorry, but that is Will, um, Will Smith's memoir by none other than Will Smith and Mark Manson. Like I said, this is literally Will Smith's memoir and it was written with the help of Mark Manson who wrote The Subtle Art of Not Giving a I don't know if I can swear in a sponsorship, so you know what I'm talking about though. <laughs> and then we have My Body by Emily Ratajkowski. This is a deeply honest investigation about what it means to be a woman and a commodity by the acclaimed model Emily Ratajkowski. So those were the five books that you guys can choose from for November, as well as two of the add-ons that Book of the Month has chosen in case you want a little something extra. I think that there are some really good choices in here, and I definitely would have a hard time choosing between probably like two or three of them. But like I said, if you guys are interested in trying out Book of the Month for the first time, you can use my code Dash of Ash. I'll have a link down below as well where you can go to the website and you can get your first book and box with my code for just $9.99. <laughs> and thank you once again to Book of the Month for sponsoring today's video. Now, let us get on to the romance. <laughs> so like I said in the beginning of this video, you guys know that I'm a fantasy lover at heart, but I cannot shy away from the romance. I, oh god, mm -hmm. I love it. And there are some books that I feel like have been kind of making their rounds in the like popularity spectrum of book reading and romance readers and stuff like that for a while, and I've just kind of like shied away from them because like I've never been like a huge romance reader until recently when I start you know devouring all of the romance especially this year I feel like I've read so much of it and it's not gonna stop now. So I just went through and found a couple of books that I've heard a lot about as well as maybe like one or two that I really haven't heard too much about. Um, I have five on this list that I'm adding to my TBR that I will probably end up buying genuinely before the day is done so 
let's do this. So first up, I want to talk about two books that I feel like everybody and their mother have read, especially from this author. That's Emily Henry. Um, if you know where I'm going with this, you probably do if you're a big romance reader. Um, those books are Beach Read and People We Meet on Vacation. That's the name of it. Like I said, I feel like everybody and their mother was talking about Beach Read for the longest time and same with the other book, People We Meet on Vacation. I know nothing about them, to be completely honest. I know that some people actually really disliked Beach Read and a lot of people really, really, really enjoyed it. So I'm eager to see where I'm gonna fall on that spectrum. But yeah, both are just romance books that I've heard so much about. I feel like everybody has read them or everybody has talked about them or seen them or heard of them at some point in their lives. They're just super popular romance books that I really want to read. Also, can we just talk about how like all adult romance stories at this point look like they have the same exact covers? What is with that? Like I get that that's probably what is selling at this point, but it's just like you look at the romance section in a bookstore and they like they all look the same. They're all like, you know, the hand-drawn little calligraphy style covers with the cute little like drawing illustration of the people in the books. Like I just, they all look the same to me. Okay, so Beach Read is about a romance writer who no longer believes in love and a literary writer stuck in a rut engaged in a summer long challenge that may just upend everything they believe about happily ever afters. And then People We Meet on Vacation is about two best friends, 10 summer trips, one last chance to fall in love. Yeah, so these two characters, they met a long time ago, they live apart most of the year, but they take like a summer vacation every year or something. And then two years ago, something happens that ruins everything and they haven't spoken since. I'm not really sure what that was, but I can kind of infer. Um, and then they end up doing it one last time, one more vacation together, um, because the girl Poppy still wants to be with him or something. And I don't, I don't know. I don't really know what's going on. I just know that it's a romance and I know that a lot of people like it and I'm here for it, you know? The next one that I've seen a lot but I haven't really heard talked about a lot is the series that starts with Bringing Down the Duke by Evie Dunmore. Um, the one that I've been seeing the most often recently is like A Portrait of a Scotsman, which I guess is book three in this series that I didn't know was a series because I clicked on a portrait of a Scotsman and then it said book three of three, A League of Extraordinary Women. And I was like, I'm sorry, what? So um, essentially I want to read books one, two, and three, but we're just going to be focused on bringing down the Duke here. First of all, the guy's name in this story is Sebastian Devereaux. And I don't know why, but I love that name. <laughs> also, it's set in England in 1879. So we've got a period piece. I'm so excited for this. I really want to read it. I'm just like here. I'm here for the romance. In the description, it's it says, a stunning debut for author Evie Dunmore and her Oxford suffragists in which a... Why did I read it like that? <laughs> I know how to say suffragists. In which a fiercely independent Vikers... Vickers? Vicars. I still don't know how to say that. Daughter takes on a powerful duke in a fiery love story that threatens to upend the British social order. So is it kind of like Bridgerton? I don't know, but I'm here for it. So then, then, okay, I was looking online and I found one that I know I have seen in so many places, so many pictures online and stuff like that, but I totally forgot about until I saw it again and I was like, oh yeah, this exists. It's gonna be The Spanish Love Deception by Elena Armas. Like I said, I've seen this around, but I knew nothing about it until I started obviously reading the description and I'm here for it. Um, though some of the reviews are actually kind of polarizing. A lot of people are like, why did this need to be 400 pages? If, you know, they had just cut out like one to 200 pages of this, it would have been great. Other people are like, oh my God, this is the best book ever. So clearly we've got some decisiveness, de deci divisiveness. So I'm eager to see what I'm gonna think. To be honest, I don't think that being too long has ever deterred me away from a romance. It's definitely deterred me from like a fantasy or something like that because uh, that can just drag on if you're not careful and it's too long. But a romance? I don't know. I feel like if it's just like constantly cute then it works but we'll see. We'll see. Essentially from what I've gathered this is set in Spain or there's a there's a wedding in Spain and this girl Catalina Martin um, has to fake date this guy that she hates and bring him along to this wedding so that her family will get over her being single, which like I'm here for, fake dating, let's go. It seems kind of like fake dating, almost like enemies to lovers, maybe like a slow burn considering how long the book is. I don't know. It's, it's 482 pages. It's almost a 500 page romance book. <laughs> 
but guess what? I'm here for it. And so the last book that I want to talk about is one that I actually didn't know existed until I was looking for romance books and trying to figure out which ones I wanted to add to my TBR and which ones I wanted to read. And this one came up and I was like, first of all, the cover looks like every other romance book, so clearly I'm in the right place. And second of all, it sounds really cute. So um, the book that I'm talking about is called The Charm Offensive by Alison Cochran. The little snippet before the actual summary says, In this witty, heartwarming romantic comedy reminiscent of Red, White, and Royal Blue and One to Watch, an awkward tech wonder kid on a reality dating show goes off script when sparks fly with his producer. Essentially from what I've gathered is it's basically just like The Bachelor but in book and the guy on The Bachelor falls in love with the guy who's producing the show. And I'm here for it! So anyway, I don't really know much about this book other than that it sounds cute and it looks like every other romance out there and I'm here for it. If you haven't been with me for a while or been following any of my videos, some of the romance that I've already read that I've loved have obviously been Red, White, and Royal Blue. I love the Brown Sisters trilogy. I really loved the Hating Game. Speaking of which, I saw the trailer just recently came out and I'm not sure how I feel about it, so let me know how, what you think in the comments if you watched it. I think that it has potential. I'm just, I need to see the whole thing to know for sure. The trailer, it left me a little like, what is going on? But um, I also thought it was still cute. So I love, you know, like the, the super trendy popular romance and I am really excited to get into some more of it. I love the love. So anyway, I think that's gonna be it for my list today. If you guys have any romance books that you really love or that you are really looking forward to reading soon, drop them in the comments down below. Um, also, if you have any like fantasy romance recommendations, like literally any sort of book with romance, love, anything like that in it, you can leave it in the comments below. Specifically made this list for like adult contemporary romance, but like I'm here for anything, so leave it in the comments. But yeah, I think the moral of this video is just that I love love and I'm here for it and I just want to read it all and that's it. So yeah you guys I think that's gonna be it for this video. If you want to follow me on any of my socials all my handles are in the description. Thank you so much for watching and I will catch you later. Bye!